What's going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to simulate real life processes in Python using an external library called SimPy. And the first thing we want to do is we want to install it using the command line. So we're going to open up CMD on Windows, for example, or terminal on Linux and Mac. And we're going to type pip install SimPy like that. Now, for those of you who also don't have NumPy installed, we're going to need NumPy for today's tutorial. So type pip install NumPy. This is just uh, for the randomness factor that we're going to use uh, NumPy for. Uh, and besides that, we can get right into the example. Now, as I mentioned, SimPy is a library that allows us to, to simulate real life processes. And I'm not going to explain here on, on a theoretical level, what we're doing, what functions there are, I'm going to start right away with an example. So we're going to get right into it with the example of a call center, we're going to have a certain number of employees, we're going to have a certain number uh, of calls, or you could say a customer interval, and we're going to have an average time that it takes to uh, support the customer. So average call time, we could say. And then we're going to see, given a simulation time of let's say two hours, how many uh, customers we can handle with that call center. This is a simulation that we're going to run here. And we're going to build that with SimPy. So first of all, we're going to import random, which is the basic Python randomness module, we're going to import SimPy. And we're going to import NumPy as NP. And the first thing we want to do is we want to define a couple of constants here or things that we can tweak for the simulation. So for example, the number of employees, and we're going to start with two employees in the call center. So we have a call center with two employees, two people accepting calls, answering calls. And uh, we also want to have an average support time. Let's say the average call takes five minutes. And of course, we can have deviations from that. But let's say the average call takes five minutes. Um, and also, we want to have a certain customer interval. So how often do customers call? And let's say, for example, um, a customer calls every two minutes. So a new customer calls a call center every two minutes. And then we can also say that we have a certain simulation time of 120 minutes. So those are the parameters that we pass uh, or that we're going to use for this simulation. And then we're going to have a counter variable called uh, customers underscore handled like that, right? There you go. Um, and the first thing we want to do is we want to model the call center. And this is going to be quite simple, we're going to create a new class call center. And this class has a constructor, where we're going to define some things. So in it, um, and we're going to pass here the environment for the simulation, this is something from SimPy. we're going to pass a number of employees. And we're going to pass the support time. So the average support time. And then we're going to just set these things. So we're going to say self environment equals environment self dot number employees equals number employees and self dot support time equals support time. Um, or actually, I, I messed that up because one thing that we need to do here, uh, this we're not just going to set the number, this is the first thing where SimPy comes into play, we want to have a resource that is shared across the individual customer. So we have a number of employees, in this case, two. this is a resource. So we have two uh, two people that are able to answer the calls. Now we don't just want to have this as a number here, we want to have the resource so that when a customer calls, he can try to get something from that resource. So to get someone who answers his call, for example, uh, but also if both of them are already occupied with a call, we have to wait. So the customer has to wait. And because of that, we're not just going to assign this as a number here, we're going to say that this is a simpy dot resource. And we're going to say that it's going to be part of the environment. And we're going to set this here to num employees. So we want to set um, the amount of individual uh, callers that we have in this resource, this is the amount here. So this is the number of employees that we pass here. Um, and then we're also going to have a basic support function. So this is the actual action function, you could say this is the thing where the support happens. And we're going to say here, customer is going to be passed and um, the customer we're going, we're going to talk about this in a second here. Uh, but essentially, we're going to specify now or we're going to to generate a time that this call is going to take. And for that, we're going to say random underscore time. And here we're going to do something a little bit fancy, you can also just do a basic randomness, but I'm going to say it's going to be the maximum of one and np.random.normal distribution. 
where the support time, the average support time that we have is the average, so the um, the mean and the standard deviation is four. Now, why do we even need this max function here? Because if we have this normal distribution, we're going to also get negative values, or we're going to get values that are zero or less than zero, which is negative. Um, and we don't want to have that we want to have a minimum call time of one. But this normal distribution here, uh, for those of you who don't know what a normal distribution is, it's basically a statistical distribution that looks like a bell curve. So you have the mean, in this case, the mean is five, and then you have a standard deviation, depending on the standard deviation, you have it uh, wider or more narrow. And the problem is that in some cases, you might also go beyond zero to the left side. So we don't want to have that we want to have a minimum of one. Uh, and because of that, we're going to go for the maximum. So if this here is less than one, it's going to always take the one. Otherwise, we're going to have this normal distribution here as a generator for the random uh, support time. And now this is how this library works, we need to to yield this because this is a generator for those of you who don't know anything about generators. I have a video on this channel about generators and also about the yield keyword. Um, but essentially, we need to yield the self environment. And in this case, we're going to yield the timeout. So the timeout is a function here, a method that we can call given a random time. So given this time, it's going to have a timeout, the whole environment is going to have this timeout, and we have to yield this um, in order to to make this happen. So we cannot just call this, we have to yield this, uh, and then it's going to be used. Now, after that, we're going to print just for our information, support finished for and then the customer at and then self dot environment and we can access here the now keyword and we're going to format this as 0.2 F so uh, rounding it to two decimal places. And that is actually the call center class. That's that's all we have to do here. Now we're also going to add a function, we're going to define this as a function not as a class, uh, which is the customer and the customer is going to be defined like that it's going to be given an environment, it's going to be given a name, and it's going to be given a call center. And this uh, customer now is first of all going to use the customers handle variable because when this cu a customer is satisfied, or at least handle doesn't have to be satisfied, we want to increase that counter. So we're going to say global customer handled, or customers handled. And then we're going to start by printing that this customer is now um, that this customer now arrives into the you could say waiting queue of the of the call center, I don't know what message we're going to, to do here, customer enters waiting queue or something, you can change that message if you want to. Um, and of course, we need to pass here the customer name. And we want to pass the time here. So environment dot uh, environment dot now essentially point to F here again. And then this happens already when he tries to get some service. However, the, the call is not yet answered. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say with call, uh, or call center dot staff, which is, um, or actually, in this case, we called it, actually, let's change that here to staff. Because the number of employees is the number of employees, but the staff is the stuff. So we're going to say call center dot staff dot request as request. So here we make the request to the staff We want to get someone onto the phone, but maybe there is no one available, or maybe we have someone available. So this is going to make the request. And we have to yield that request now. So we're yielding that request. And once this happens, once this passes, we can print that the customer with the name uh, enters call at and then again, environment now point to F like that. And then we yield the environment dot process. And we want to process the call center dot support function, given the name. So remember here, we take a customer, this is just going to be the name here. Um, so we pass that name and we call the support function, which is that what calls uh, which which does the timeout here. Um, and we yield that process. And then once this passed, so once this is done, we can say customer 
name left call at nth now point to f. And then last but not least, of course, this customer was handled plus equals one essentially. Um, and the last thing that we need to do now, this is all we need to do for the logic. All, uh, so, so the last thing that we need to do now is we need to set up the whole thing. So we need to run the whole process. And for that, we're going to say setup. So this is going to be the function, the main function you could say here. Also, we pass an environment, the number of employees, the support time, and the customer interval. So how often uh, do customers enter the waiting queue? And here we say the call center object is a new call center. And what we pass here is the environment, the number of employees and the support time, basically just passing the parameters. Uh, and then we say for I in range. And we're going to start with some basic customers right away. Uh, environment process customer environment num employees and uh, call center. So we just have some customers already. We don't start from scratch. We already have a couple of customers in there. Uh, five in this case, uh, named from one to, to five. And then what we do is we say while true yield and now environment timeout, which is basically the same thing that we're doing here in the support function. But now we have a different use case. Now we're going to define, okay, if someone calls the call center or not. And the timeout is going to be the time we wait until another cost uh, customer calls the call center. And for that, what we're going to do is we're going to use random dot rand int. And the range is going to be the customer average interval uh, minus one to the customer average interval plus one. So the average interval is that a customer calls every two minutes. Now, sometimes it's going to call after one minute, sometimes it's going to call uh, after three minutes. But that's essentially it. Um, and then what we do is we say i plus equals one. Now, this is not necessarily a clean way because we have the i here, but we can still uh, use the i here as well. Not not the best way to do that. However, we're going to do it now uh, because it's done like that in the documentation as well. Now, environment process and what we want to process is uh, actually not the call center. This was a wrong auto completion. Here we want to process the customer. So we want to create new customers here, environment, number of employees, and call center every time here. Um, and that's essentially it. Now, the last thing that needs to be done here is calling all that. So we're going to say now print starting call center simulation. The environment is going to be a new simpy dot environment. And then we're going to start the whole process, which is going to be the setup. And the setup is going to take the environment and the constants now here as um, what do we need here average support time, the constants as parameters here, customer interval, and then we're going to run the whole thing, we're going to run the environment until the simulation time passed. So 120 minutes or instances, like it could be seconds, minutes, you can you can think about this however you want, just keep it consist, uh, consistent. And in the end, what we want to know is how many customers were handled, customers handled is going to be a string of customers handled. So that is it. Now let's run this. And this is going to run our simulation, you can see here, okay, we have a problem customer two. Why do we always have customer two? Um, let me just see that real quick here. So it, it has to be because we passed the same. I think I passed somewhere the number of employees where I should not pass the number of employees. Where could that be whenever I create a customer probably right? Yeah. Yeah, obviously, we don't pass the number of employees, we pass I here. There you go. Let's run this again. And now you see how that goes. So we start in the beginning with customer one enters waiting queue. So all those five customers here enter um, the queue at zero. So at the first possible time, and then we have like enters the call left the call and so on, you can see 
uh, how this happens. Sometimes it takes longer, sometimes not. And in this particular type, uh, in this particular case of the simulation, which of course has some random randomness in it, um, we have 53 customers handled with two employees uh, in two hours. And now we have 45. We can run this a couple of times here. Of course, you can also use a random seat, but then again, you know, you're you're focusing on one particular scenario, which could which could be different. Um, I recommend running running this a hundred times and then taking the average. Uh, but we can see now what happens if we extend the capacities a little bit. So let's say we don't have two employees. Let's say we have three employees. How many more can we handle in this case? And you can see already that we have 61. Now, before we had something like 48, 40, 45, maybe 50. Uh, now we have 61 in the first try. We have 65 in the second try. So you can see uh, time changes uh, or the amount changes here. So let's go and see what happens if we add nine. And the interesting thing is that sooner or later, we're going to, to reach a limit because if we have like nine employees, the problem is not that we need more employees, but we just don't have enough customers. So you can see here when I run this with nine employees, um, I don't get really much more than 60 customers handled. So 61, 62, and so on, uh, 64, but it's not really much more than three. So also, if I go with 100 here, we're not really gonna notice a big difference. We're gonna stay at 61 because we're limited by the customer. So we can also go ahead and say, okay, uh, every second a customer calls or every minute a customer calls, and now you can see we handle way more customers, which would not be the case probably if we just have three employees. And this is just a very basic example. As you can see here, you can model different processes in the documentation. You have the uh, example of a car washing station. Uh, you can also do, I don't know, supply and demand, which is a little bit more uh, supply and demand uh, simulations like marketplace simulations, which is a little bit more advanced. But this library is very interesting to model real life processes. It makes it easy and intuitive to just go ahead and say, okay, I have the following parameters. I have the following functions and scenarios. Let me see what would happen if I tweak this value and so on. Um, so yeah, I think that's quite interesting. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.